everyone, it's Sam here. Thank you for watching. So today I have pulled out my handbags book and this time I'm going to recreate something like this. So this bag as boudoir is the perfect accomplice for applying makeup in public. The slick little antelope bag works like a portable powder room for modern women on the hop from club to cocktail lounge. Is an Elizabeth Arden clutch style bag from early 1930s. So obviously I'm not going to be using antelope today. I'm using cardstock. I think this is going to be really nice if you buy makeup for people and, you know, as gifts. There's lots of little pockets and things that you can use for mascaras, lipstick, the little brushes and things like that. You could even put some mirrored card there. You could use my Glitz and Glam collection, which would look really nice. I am doing Mother's Day and Easter projects at the moment. So I'm going to be, I think this is going to be part of Mother's Day. I will pop it into that playlist, I think, because the papers I'm using is what I've been using on all my other Mother's Day projects. So this is the one we're making today. So if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I am very, very slowly working my way through this book. I have done quite a few already and they're in my unusual handbag style gift bag playlist and that will be linked up here so check that out if you like unusual packaging and you like to give people unusual gift bags then I think you'll like that playlist so I have I only make one of these I think I've I think I've got it how I want it to be so I may change a few pieces you might find the video is edited um, a few times but hopefully this is um, everything I need so I'm probably not going to have handles on this although it's a bag it's probably going to be more like a gift box so um but you can easily add the handles if you want so you're going to want two pieces of 11 by 9 inch cardstock and you're going to score along that 11 inch side you're going to score at one nine and ten and then rotate and then along the short side you're going to score at one and eight okay you want to do that on both pieces so I think what I'll do is I'll put this together first and then I'll go through all the different compartments because I think everyone is going to do their slightly different. You might have a different layout. You're going to have different gifts. So if I give you the measurements for each piece and you can decide what ones you want. So we'll put all this together first. So you need to fold and burnish all of your score lines. Excuse the shadow here. It's It's gone really dark outside. So I need to, um, yeah, I need to fix this lighting a bit better but hopefully it's not too distracting so along the um on both pieces you're going to cut this the same but along the short side where you've just got the little squares in the corner that's what you want facing you opposite at the other end you should have these two pieces here so you just want to cut down both the score lines just to that first score line and i'm just going to take a little wedge off of each side there and again like so and then come around to this way and the top corner you want to remove completely and then you just want to cut down to the next score line so you've just freed up the squares and again just cut a little wedge off of the edges so what's going to happen is we're going to bring all of this up to form like the tray and then this top piece is our hinge to attach the other one. You see they come in like so. So just repeat that cutting on this piece. Now we can start putting it together. So I'm going to use the construction glue on everything now, just so it makes it nice and tough. So just add some glue onto the tab. And you're going to bring that under. And we want to get a nice right angle there. And these are going to sit on top of each other. So it's going to be two inches in depth so you can get a lot in here and then go around to the next corner again add your glue like so and then just pop that one under and then do the same at this end i'm just going to fold that one back because you want to stick these at the same time so again just add your glue and then just bring that one up Again, just make sure you've got that right angle because they won't line up with each other otherwise. Okay, so just repeat that now on the other piece. Okay, so like I said, there might be some times where I change things. You only need one tab. You don't need to tab on both. So I'm actually now just going to cut on one of them, just cut this off. So it's easy to do. In fact, my glue is still 
yeah you can get away with that so you just want to cut this off of just one piece so a little bit of waste but you might find that you use that in the um pockets and stuff when we get to that point so yeah so just snip that away and then i'm just gonna pop that back together there we go so i've got my i'm going to say this is my base and then this is the lid which has just got the plain four pieces that's going to attach inside like so and then we're going to add like little um supports inside the base here for the lid to slide into so you're going to want to cut yourself do two pieces that are seven and seven eighths by one and a half next you're going to add your glue onto each side of the long sides like so and then you're going to slide in these pieces so that they're going to reinforce the sides but they're also going to act as a track for the lid to sit against okay so whilst they're drying you then want to cut another piece that's again one and a half and this one will be six and seven eighths and then again, just add your glue all in that front section. I'm just going to use my burnishing tool just to go in and really spread out all that glue and make sure they're nice and straight. And make sure every, oh, and also just this will make sure everything's nice and flat. And then if you do a little test, you should be able to sit your lid. Don't worry about that bit for the minute, but just place your lid over the top and it should sit nice and snug so now we can attach the lid to the base so i'm going to add my glue onto the back of the tab here and then i'm just going to kind of clip it onto the back of that piece but then also put the lid on and just kind of get it to tack in place for a minute and then open it up and you just want to make sure it's sat in there so it's folded over and it's now attached to the back of the lid so that's all secure once you're happy that the hinge is kind of attached fold it right back and really burnish that there so that way it will open plus it, i mean once the weight's all in there for the gifts and things it will fall back nicely but you'll see now that that holds itself really well so now to decorate because i want to lay these down first and then add all of the pockets inside. So I've cut myself here three, you might want four pieces. To be fair, I probably will cut another one for the back, but these are just shy of seven by eight. So I've just, it's more like six and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths. I'm gonna have this one probably that way up. So that's gonna go on the front. And I've got a lot of scraps of this design, which I'm gonna use to decorate all the boxes inside. So inside, I'm going to have the stripe as the background because I think this is going to look nice with the pockets. I think it'll look quite good. So there's my three pieces. So I'm going to stick one on the front and then the other two inside here. So now the fun part. So I've kind of roughly planned out where I think I want the pieces to go because as you open it, I want my pockets to be this way up. So if there's brushes or whatever I'm putting in, they're not going to fall out. I have got some closed little boxes as well with hook and loop. So if there are things in there, they're not going to fall out. But I think if you are going to have maybe if you're doing like a little beauty box, you're going to have like face masks, just, you know, things like that. Maybe like a little face cloth. They can all kind of sit in the pockets. And then when you close it up, you know it's all going to stay upright and it's not going to fall out so i'm going to give you the measurements and my kind of layout but like i said this is going to be really easy for you to change and work with what it is that you're going to be putting inside so i've got this one here and i think i've ended up doing two of that one so i've got that one there that one there okay so I've got two, this one here is this already cut down. So if you, again, if you're following my layout, just follow what I'm saying. So you are gonna wanna cut two pieces of five and a quarter by five and a half. And along the five and a half side, you're gonna score at half an inch, one and a quarter, four and a quarter and five. 
and then rotate and you're going to score at half one and a quarter and four and a half and then this is for the the lid this is three by two and a half along the two and a half side you're going to score at half an inch and one and a quarter i'll cut all that down in a minute i'm then going to do a really tall uh box so again i just thought it'd be good for me like you can put a chocolate bar in there but if you are going to put some br brushes in there maybe some nail files just all those long beauty things then um you might want to make this longer as well but i've done this this is a piece of four and a half by eight and a quarter along the four and a half side you're going to score at half an inch and one and a quarter and then three and a quarter and four rotate and you're going to score at three quarters seven and seven and three quarters and then this is the lid so this is two by two and three quarter Along the two and three quarter side, you're going to score at half and one and a quarter. Then I've got two pockets. So this one is a bigger pocket. This is a piece of seven and a half by four and a quarter. Along the seven and a half side, you're going to score at half, one and a quarter, six and a quarter and seven. And then along the four and a quarter side, you're going to score at half and one and a quarter. The depth of all of the boxes are three quarters. When the box closes, there will be a half inch gap between the two. But if you've got a blending brush or something that's padded, that I've just given you that bit of space so that you can close the box up with all the stuff inside. If I was to make these exactly one inch deep, and then when they come together, they're just going to sit against each other and you're not going to be able to, because some of them might be a bit bulky or bulger a bit. So I've just allowed that space. This is the smaller pockets. This is five and a half by three and a half. Along the five and a half side, you're going to score at half, one and a quarter, four and a quarter and five. And then rotate along that three and a half side. You're going to score at half an inch and at one and a quarter. Fold and burnish all of those score lines. So first of all, I'm going to do the box. So I've already cut this one. So what's going to happen? It's all going to fold around. The half inch tabs will attach to the box. Bring all that up there. So that's the back, that's gonna stick. They're the sides, it's like a little matchbox. And then this is the lid. So I'll just bring that up. Okay, so that is gonna sit down in one of the areas on the gift bag. And then the little hook and loop, you can open it up and then you can get out. Maybe a nice little blush or something will go in there. So that is how this is gonna look. But with this one, I'm gonna keep the flap as a rectangle this one i've cut into a triangle shape so i've just scribbled out the areas here because i think it's easier then for you to see so i've got my the the width so this is the the five and a half is along the width there and then this uh, five and a quarter height you want it so you've just got that one piece at the bottom at the top here i've got the two folds okay and then the large square i've just put a pencil mark in the bottom two corners and then in the middle section so we want to keep these little squares here so I'm just going to snip up all of the score lines to the first score line and then just remove and then I'm just going to fold these up and remove so this is the the, the opening here okay and then bring it round and then I'm going to snip all of this away. In fact, you want to cut up that one as well. So you want to free up that square. So I'll do it again on this side. You're going to cut all the way up to the second score line. Again, up to the second score line, but remove the outer bit there and then that little bit. And then these are your tabs. You just want to cut a little wedge off of each side. And I'm also going to cut a little bit up here. I'm always usually just cutting away the score line when I cut the uh, little bits off of the sides here. So again, using my glue, I'm going to add a little onto these tabs here. And then you can bring that around and under. Again, make sure you've got that nice right angle. And then bring that one under as well. And then just make sure that these pieces, when you fold them in, they will sit nicely 
over the top so you can see my corners there make sure it's all nice and straight give that a minute to dry i'm going to do the same with this one now that's as far as i can go with them at the moment because i don't want to start sticking them in in case i change my mind with the positioning so you should have your lid and this piece so just pop them to one side then i'm going to move on to the tall one so again i've done the same so i've got the four and a half width and then obviously the length which is eight and a quarter you want the end that's just got the one fold at the top here's got the two and you're going to cut it exactly the same way so i'm just going to cut up all of the bottom sections is exactly the same as what i've just done there it's just tall and thin now i'm just going to take away the corners and then again just fold those up and remove that whole middle section and take a little piece off the side and then rotate and again cut all the way up to the second score line again all the way up to the second score line again on this side and then remove the two sections and again and then remove the end there and again take a little bit off the sides add my glue again to the two tabs at the bottom here so it's the end where you've got this piece not these ones and i'm going to bring them both around Okay, so now that one is all ready. You can see it looks the same. And then I've got my lid there with that one. And then we'll do the two little kind of pockets. So you want them both in this orientation, so landscape, and you want the end or the side with the two pieces there. Again, I'll just mark it with a pencil because I think it does help. You're going to remove the three cornered sections. So one, two, three. Okay, we'll just hold that up there. So I'm going to cut up. To the second score line so you'll do that like you did with the others so now we're just creating the bottom part of all of those boxes we're just not having the the, the top it's just going to you know be an open box or an open pocket then remove those two and again and then remove the bottom like so cut a little wedge Like so add my glue and you're going to stick it in exactly the same way and you want to do exactly the same cuts with this smaller piece so again remove this one this one and this one this one this one and this one it's exactly the same as this just a different size okay so i think i've got everything that i'm going to need so bring this one back in. So again, that's going to be how mine opens. So it's just now up to you really where you want to position everything. So I think I'm going to have that one there because you need to make sure that they can open. And ah, that's another thing is take out what's inside. So what I might do with this one is you can just cut like a little bit out of here. And then that should be enough then to take the chocolate bar and things like that out of. The other little pocket, so I think this one I will have down here. So again, I'm going to cut a little section. I'll show you that in a moment. I didn't think about that, but that will work fine. So that's nice. And then I can have a little sentiment or something there. And then in this one, so now you want to turn it. This is going to be the open pocket and then maybe so i was thinking about having one that way but what i might do is have a smaller one i'm going to have a play i like definitely like this end here so what you want to do is where what i do actually is you can attach your lid just add a little bit of glue to the edges there this is on the tall one just enough for that to grip. In fact, it's going to be better to do it like this before you stick it down because you can get 
inside here. So just make sure that's right up to the fold there. So, and then again, I'm just going to use my tweezers just to help that grab. I'll just open that up. Can just go in like so okay so we've got our backless box but if you bring the lid down and just lightly mark with a pencil that now is how far i can cut like a, a little semicircle. i'm just going to fold that back or just you know i might even just do a triangle i'm going to come just above the pencil mark like so I do a little test i'll pop something in here and just check that i can get it out so now if that's in there i'll put the little hook and loop either side of that piece so now when it opens say i've got let's see if i can put something in just so that's quite long but they can get that out fine so if you are putting blending brushes if it's sweet then they can just tip them out but that will go in better again you know so that's going to allow you now to still have that open, but it's got the room to be able to come out. You know, see what kind of things. What else could I try? Did I put a pen in? Maybe put doing a little stationery box like a back to school. So they go in there. Actually, I like the back to school idea. So yeah, so that's going to work. So just repeat how I did that on any of the others. So again, just that one. Just put a little pencil mark, and then you know, just come down just above it. To stick them in, once you put your lid on, you want to add your glue to the four sides that you'll have, or three if it's just these pockets, and stick them in however you want. So I'm going to have a play around with all this, and um, I'm going to get all of the fronts decorated. I've got loads of scraps, and I'll give you all the measurements to that once I'm done. Okay, so I have decorated all of the box. I'm going to go through the measurements. So I've already given you the front. I've put the stripy on the back. I'm actually getting low now on full sheets of the... Um, that's the last of the stripe and I've got no more now of the floral. If you want to decorate the sides here, you're going to want two pieces of seven eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths. For these sides, you're going to want four pieces of seven eighths of an inch by seven seven eighths of an inch. I've done a smaller border this time. I just I'm kind of yeah, I'm doing that at the moment. Usually I do a quarter of an inch. Now I seem to be doing uh, one eighth of an inch. And then when you open it up. I love this. I'm going to have a sentiment here, which I still need to do. Um, but I think it looks great. And I've just uh, cut in to all of the parts there. I've got lots of scraps, but I think what I might do is just cut some of this. You could make these as full boxes. You know, when I was sticking this in, I thought it could have just been a full box. that I just added the glue on the back and then stuck it down. But I don't know. Maybe you got, would have got a bit more bulk with that. You can do if you want. Those of you that know what you're doing with the gift boxes, you might just want to make them full boxes and then just stick them in. Anyway, I may well cover inside, but I think once the gift's in there, you're not going to see it anyway. The hook and loop that I've used are these ones here. These are the 10 mil because they fit nicely within those spaces. This one, I'm thinking like just some little biscuits, like a pack of biscuits in there. In here, I'm just, yeah, I, I've got an idea of all the bits I'm going to put in this because it's going to be, obviously, my mum's going to have this. And then this way is this way up. So I'm going to have something here and something here so it will fit within that space. But I thought that way you can get a hold of everything. And then this one I've actually put on the side so you can, you know, obviously easily access it. I did end up having to put a new piece over this because there was nowhere to put the hook and loop because when that went over, it, it, it just wasn't going to work. So I do recommend that you have the full tab i might decorate them i was thinking maybe heat um maybe using an embossing folder detail we'll see but once that all closes up like i said if you've got something bulky here it's going to be able to fall into this space a little bit because you've got that half inch um of extra space inside but you should i can feel them kind of like when i squeeze there i can feel them against each other so measurements for the bits inside here so for this one Again, basically, you just want to drop down one eighth of an inch on each side of the main size of the box. So this would be one and seven eighths by six and one eighth. This would be two and seven eighths by two and one eighth. This one is two and seven eighths by three and one eighth. 
This one is four and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And this one here is three and one eighth by two and seven eighths. All the measurements are coming up, so just pause, but I will put them into my blog as well. Now to make the closure, I've got this piece here, which is going to go over the top. And then I might do a nice little thing there and a little gift, gift tag, which you'll see at the very end. This is a piece of six by uh it's just scrap actually so it's like two and three eighths two and a half is going to be fine two and a quarter is going to be fine it's entirely up to you along the long side you want to score at one and a half and then it's easier if you fold and burnish that one pop it over the back get it in the middle or wherever and then fold that around and just pinch it then take it out and put it back into your scoreboard so when i lay it in now it's just on that notch it's in between three and a half and three and five eighths so then i can just move it and then go over it with the score line it's that funny sixteenths of an inch so if you just fold it it's just a lot easier for me to show you that way and then i'm just going to add my glue on the back so i'm going to keep this as a little clutch and then just want to focus on the front make sure that's in the middle so it's just it's about two and a quarter from each side and then push that down onto the back and then i've got my bigger hook and loop so i've got these ones here so these are the 20 mil and i think one pair is going to be enough so just pop those together maybe two so i'm going to stick we do two, I think, just in case. So that one, and then make sure they've kind of gripped to each other. Make sure your pattern paper's dry because there's quite a bit of pressure when you first take these off. So can you see it's slightly lifting? So I'm just going to use my tweezers there because the bottom one's not stuck down enough. So just kind of prise it open carefully there we go and now you'll be able to really apply some pressure if you open that up and then you can kind of get in there and that one's inside the box there we go now that's nice and secure if you want to decorate the front of this i'm going to keep mine plain or i might emboss it but um just cut a little bit shorter again so i do two and a quarter by two and a quarter so i'm going to finish this now with the details for a little sentiment gift tag and uh yeah i'll show you when it's all done so it's now the next day and i've just been doing the finishing touches i decided not to put a tag on the front because all of these are going into a bigger basket with all of the other 3d makes that i've made if i've not shared it at the start the mother's day for this year series will be up and you can also find a mother's day playlist of all of the years that i've been on youtube and been making mother's day i you know packaging ideas they're all there as well so i just thought i'm going to keep it plain plus my mum recycles pretty much everything that i give to her she then gives to her friends so she might just take a tag off or change if it's personalized so with this one it's you know once she's taken the gifts out, she can reuse it again. So I've added the um, gold cardstock onto this and I've just embossed it using my linen print embossing folder. I've just added some more of these flowers, which I've used on a lot of the other projects. Again, just kind of tying it all together so it all matches. The hook and loop, which you saw me do. And then inside, I'm so pleased with this. I've got the sentiment there today is all about you, which I've used on another box, but this one's inside. And then that gold foiling on the closures there on the boxes, I just think looks really nice with the um, the embossed detail there. So, yeah, they all work perfectly fine. I'll be able to get the gifts in. Like I said, I kind of know what I'm putting in. These are going to be a little trio of biscuits that you can buy those little packs. These are going to be some craft related things that she's into at the moment. And I've got an idea of something that's going to go in here. What I'll try and do is take photos of what I've ended up putting inside or just how it's all kind of laid out. And then, um, yeah, I'll eventually I'll update the blog and put those photos in. And again, this one here, you can easily get the things in and out. I'm not going to decorate the insides. So just, 
just not going to, but you obviously can do. And then again, all folds up. It's going to hold a nice weight as well. Like you can put some heavy things inside this. I think it's going to hold it really well. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun, unusual gift box idea from me today. As always, all of the product that I've used will be linked in the description box below. Check out the playlist coming up here with more Mother's Day or just unusual gift packaging ideas. Make sure you're subscribed so then you don't miss out on future tutorials. And you can also watch back all of my many, many other tutorials. And uh, yeah, the product will be here as well. So you can just click there. Thank you as always for watching and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye.